to everyone for joining us this evening. Um, just so everyone is aware, we will be recording this session just so that anyone who is unable to attend uh, will be able to come back and rewatch it. So we're going to be reposting that uh, session virtually on the website uh, following this meeting. Now, uh, with that being said, please welcome to the second uh, virtual public open house for Carleton Place's Parks, Recreation and Culture Master Plan. Just a quick agenda for this evening. We will be going through um, the proposed draft recommendations, at least a highlight of them. Uh, that will take a roughly hour and a half. We'll have checkpoints throughout where people can provide comments. We'll give you a summary and closing remarks of kind of what our next steps are and what we're looking for. And then a question and answer period will follow uh, where you'll be able to answer, or excuse me, ask us uh, any questions you might have about the plan and recommendations. Uh, just as a reminder, if this is your first time joining us uh, virtually, we are going to go over how you can participate in this meeting. Um, so just some kind of meeting protocols. Microphone access can be um, pro is, is provided in either the top or bottom of your screen. And you can use the microphone tool to mute and unmute yourself and ask questions throughout this session as needed. Um, if you'd like to put, go on camera, you can um, turn on your camera using this stop video function, um, but feel free to stay off camera if, if uh, you're not comfortable with that. That's totally fine as well. Uh, and another key function is the messaging tool. So if you're not comfortable with speaking out loud during this session, please feel free to put your comments, uh, questions in the chat box, which you can find in the middle top or middle bottom of your screen. Uh, and we'll happily get to your questions or comments uh, throughout this session. And finally, once the question and answer period is over, um, and once the session is over, you can end and leave this meeting uh, using the big red button at the bottom of your screen, uh, the end, end meeting. So before we jump into the recommendations, we're just gonna do a quick round table of who we are. Uh, so my name is Moira Davidson. I am a urban planner with Stantec Consulting and I'm leading the consultation portion of this project. Uh, with me on the call today, on this meeting today, I also have Isabel Lalonde uh, and Angela Wang um, giving a little wave there. I don't know, Isabel, if you wanted to say anything else about your role on this project. Um, no, I think uh, that's great, but I, I'm really happy uh, to welcome everyone for this uh, presentation today. Perfect. Thank you. And from the town side, we have Joanne uh, on the line with us. So Joanne, if you would like to introduce yourself. Hi, everybody. I'm Joanne Henderson, and I'm the manager of recreation and culture for the town of Carlton Place, and I'm so glad that you can join us tonight. Thank you. Uh, so what is a parks and recreation and culture master plan? Uh, so the town has been developing a comprehensive parks and recreation and culture master plan um, over the past couple of months now. The plan is, it's the aim of this plan to guide decisions related to parks, recreation and culture over the next 10 years. Um, so through research and public input, this master plan will include um, and examine parks, open space, and trails throughout Carleton Place, uh, recreation, sports, and all arts and cultural facilities, programs, events, uh, and activities, and those delivered by the community, uh, as well as those delivered by the town. Operations such as policy development, staffing, um, communications, and then finally, financial and implementation strategies. So this is something that we as a project team, both Stantec and the town have been looking into over the past couple of months. And now we have a set of draft recommendations that we'd like to present to you uh, that talking follow about the, the master plan research for research the, conducted as part of phase the one. Um, the project objectives are to identify the needs based on changing demographics and population trends that we're seeing in Carleton Place, um, establish overall visions for parks, recreation, and culture within Carleton Place, develop strategies that meet 
identify needs both currently uh, and for future uh, generations, uh, align municipal efforts, operations, and budgets through priority setting uh, initiatives, and finally engage the community uh, yourselves in an inclusive and productive process that supports this master plan. So as I had mentioned before, we are currently in phase two. So we have done some background research already and now we're um, prepared to pr provide you with some draft recommendations. So we did some data collection, data analysis and a needs assessment in phase one. Uh, we took the information we learned in phase one, both our background assessments and the feedback we received from the public. Uh, and we created these draft strategies and action plans that we're gonna be sharing with you tonight. So I jumped ahead of myself, but why are we here? We want to help, uh, we want your help reviewing the draft strategies that we have. Uh, so we'd like your perspective on the timing and prioritizations of the recommendations we have, um, any gaps or elements not addressed, uh, as well as just the general direction of the master plan. So you'll see throughout tonight, there's a summary uh, and, and some highlights of the recommendations. We just want your general feedback on those uh, and then we can put the final recommendations we've posted online uh, in the February 2023 is kind of the timing we're looking at. And that's when you'll be able to provide full feedback and full review of the uh, strategies we have here tonight. So just a community overview before we jump into anything so you understand kind of what the background we are looking at when we were considering the recommendations we do or we will be presenting to you tonight. Um, this is just the estimated pro population projection of Carleton Place over the next 20 years. Um, so as you can see, uh, there's a pretty balanced population age distribution uh, between zero to nine uh, and 70. And it's expected over the next 20 years that Carlton Place will grow to a population of uh, just over 20,000 people, which is an increase in 68%. So this is the population that we utilize when considering the recommendations and where Carlton Place needs to be in providing parks, recreation, and culture in the next 10 years. Um, so as, as I stated before, we kind of use the background research, but also engagement to date uh, to kind of come up with these recommendations. Um, and as a summary of the engagement we have undertaken, we've had one staff and operations workshop, uh, one virtual public open house, which I'm sure some of you attended uh, previously. We had 35 attendees there. We also held uh, four virtual surveys for the sports uh, and community groups, the public, um, children and youth, and then seniors, and we received 387 responses in total. So that um, was helpful in generating these recommendations. And generally, respondents from these engagement sessions were satisfied with existing parks, open space, and recreation and culture facilities, but wanted more upgrades to either outdated facilities or structures, uh, more variety in the programs that were offered throughout the town, and a better promotion of programs and outreach uh, done throughout the community. Uh, overall, a summary of what we heard was that parks and recreation and culture need to be made a priority when planning for growth. And that's what we did and considered when creating these recommendations. So the draft strategic directions are the starting point that helped us and guided us to the recommendations we'll be sharing with you today. Um, so to guide this establishment of recommendations, a series of six strategic directions was developed, um, and these filtered into the following themes of parks and open space, trails and pathways, indoor recreational and cultural facilities and services, culture programs and services delivery, and then the management of projects, staff and financing under the parks, recreation and culture umbrella. So each of these strategic directions that we're gonna share with you on the following slides, they set out the vision for the town uh, and it's directly based on feedback we received as part of phase one and phase two. So I think these might be a little, a little small, so I will read them out. Um, we have the first strategic direction and it is for parks and open space. And our direction is to improve and enhance existing outdoor recreational facilities 
and identify opportunities to incorporate new amenities that can serve the dynamic changing needs and desires of the community, while ensuring that outdoor facilities remain accessible to all ages and abilities. To continue to provide a target of 3.4 hectares of open space and parks for every thousand residents as the town population grows. So that is for parks and open space. The strategic direction for trails and pathways is to strengthen trails and pathways. Connect, excuse me, let me restart. Strategic direction number two for trails and pathways is to strengthen these connectivity between existing parks, open spaces, and other major destinations, creating a comprehensive active transportation network within the town, while also considering new connections to areas of new development and incorporating a variety of trail and pathway types that can serve people of all ages and abilities. Our third strategic direction is for indoor recreational and cultural facilities and services. And it is to enhance the indoor municipal recreational and cultural facilities and services in a manner that focuses on enriching the lives of all community members by supporting accessible, affordable, and inclusive experiences. To progressively increase the town's leadership role in the coordination of services and standardized partnerships with external providers. So the next three strategic directions are for culture, programs and service delivery and management of projects, staff and financing. For culture, our strategic direction is to demonstrate active leadership and strategic governance to support a sustainable, flourishing and vibrant culture in the community and to provide cultural spaces and places that encourage creativity and engagement to incubate rich and diverse cultural experiences and resources that are essential to connect people and neighborhoods and to create an inclusive and vibrant community. Strategic direction for program and services delivery is to expand the recreational and cultural programs being offered by the town and explore improvements to service delivery and program options to cater to the changing needs of the community, as well as methods of promoting these programs to community members and the broader, broader region. And finally, for the management of parks, staff, and financing. The strategic direction is to monitor the town's assets in a deliberate and structured manner with a central contact for the public who is responsible for the management of all indoor and outdoor facilities, as well as the overseeing of each of the services provided within those facilities. So now we will get into the draft recommendations. And these draft recommendations uh, are based on public and municipal staff feedback, as well as an analysis and comparator um, assessment that was undertaken, as well as needs, gaps, and trends that we see throughout Carleton Place. And they have been divided into the following cate categories, however, however they flow out of the strategic directions that we just uh, went over. So they fall under legislation and policy, parks and open space, trails and pathways, indoor recreational and cultural facilities and services, culture, program and service delivery, management of projects, staff and financing, and lastly, monitoring. And again, this is just a highlight of the key recommendations that we have. Um, but the full list of recommendations will be provided online for review um, in February of 2023. This is just a high level overview and we just want to get some high level comments from you this evening. Um, so to start with the legislation and policy recommendations. Our first highlight is that linear pathways and pedestrian connections should be considered in the town's review of draft plans of subdivision and other development applications, including all infill development. The town should consider cash in lieu for draft plans of subdivision and any other development in the established areas where parkland supply is adequate or in surplus. The town should review the updated population projections provided by the province and county when available and realign as needed the recommended, the recommended targets for parks, recreation and culture services. The town should explore opportunities to incorporate more facilities in the southern portion of the town, specifically within the highway district secondary plan area. 
the town should consider developing a community improvement plan that provides incentives and funding programs to encourage park rec and culture enhancements. And finally, the town should consider incorporating more policies into the official plan that speak to the integration of cultural facilities and programming. So here we are at our first feedback checkpoint. Um, so I'll ask these questions, but then I'll, I'll flip back to the other slides so you can review the review the recommendations we're making. Um, but we'd like your recommendations uh, feedback specifically for legislation and policy currently. We'd like to, you to consider the following questions. Um, so which of the recommendations should we prioritize? How do you see these recommendations being implemented? Are we moving in the right direction? Uh, for legislation and policy within this master plan? And are there any gaps in these draft recommendations? So just going back to the slide again, so you can review it. Um, if you have a question or comment, you can put it in the chat uh, or you can raise your hand using the, um, well, you can put on your screen and actually raise your hand and I can call on you or your raise hand fun function. Um, Debbie, I see that you've raised your hand. Please go ahead. Uh, we have a, it's Vince Guthrie and Debbie Guthrie. I just had a um, a question. Just to understand one of the points is consider cash in lieu for draft plan subdivisions when other development in the established areas where parkland supply is adequate or in surplus. Do you know how many new parks have been added in the last five years? I think Joanne could answer that question if if you don't mind me calling on you for that. Uh, we've added, um, I believe, two new parks in the last five years. Okay, that's fair. Then I, I just didn't notice uh, a huge growth in it. That's why that's always a slippery slope to do the cash in lieu of. Thank you for answering that question. No problem. Thank you. Um, is there anyone else? I see the chat has some in there, so I'll get to that shortly, but I just want to make sure I cover everyone. And there's a question in the chat about, is there any update on cricket ground? I don't know, Joanne, if you wanted to touch on that or if you want to us to. Um, we haven't got to that point, I think, in the draft recommendations. Um, I think everything is still being assessed with the needs of the community. Uh, there's also another question in the chat. If cash in lieu is taken, uh, could it be used directly to upgrade other parks and facilities that are out of date? Um, yes, the 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 parks um, DCs are used for those upgrades. Um, one thing to note is that there's new provincial policy coming out that may impact um, the ability to or how much funding um, can be saved up and used to upgrade facilities. Um, so that's just something that we are still trying to understand as part of this process. Um, Thank you, Ian, for your question just about the official plan um, containing strategic direction for parks and recreation. Um, so that is a recommendation of this um, plan as well, to just ensure that whatever is recommended as part of this plan um, is followed through in the official plan. Um, so, Sherry, your question about affordability to residents, I'm assuming this is related to 
um, the affordability of programming and sports facility rates within the town. And we will actually get to that um, following in, in a couple of slides, um, just about how the town should be paying for uh, additional facilities that are being proposed as part of this or additional programming that's proposed as part of this master plan. Um, before I move on, is there any other questions related to legislation and policy um, that anyone has? Uh, Debbie, to your question, yes, there's more recommendations um, in the coming slides about specific facilities. Okay, I'm seeing no more questions related to legislation and policy, so we will move on to the next um, set of recommendations. And this is for parks and open space. So just for everyone's feedback, um, the next couple of slides will run the same way that that legislation section did, where we go over a summary of six um, of the recommendations that we propose. And then there will be a question and answer period at the, at the end of it, asking if we've you know got the right recommendations, if we're hitting the right um, if we're hitting the right sections of recommendations that you want to see, if we have the right themes, uh, um, that sort of thing. And then at the very end of the presentation, we can have an open discussion if we've missed anything that hasn't been covered throughout, um, or you have any general questions or comments that you'd like to ask. So for parks and open space recommendations, these are the six, um, a, a review of the six that we've chosen for tonight that, that we'd like feedback on. Um, so the first is that uh, there's a recommendation that the town should consider implementing a formal parks classification system, and this is so that parkland can be properly assessed and categorized uh, within the town. Uh, recommendation that uh, we ensure that there is all parks and open space uh, is accessible for people of all ages and abilities. There's a recommendation for the town to develop a strategy to deliver a variety of youth outdoor amenities. Uh, this includes features such as outdoor basketball, volleyball courts, skateboard parks, outdoor workout equipment, etc. Consider developing a multi-generational park uh, for people of all ages and abilities with outdoor fitness or workout stations for seniors and adults and a playground for kids. Uh, the town of Carlton Place should adopt a parkland service level target of 3.4 hectares per thousand population and should not go below a service level of 2.5 hectares per thousand population. And finally, the town should develop park standards with requirements for play areas, walkways, pathways, seating areas, courts, and play fields, enhanced pedestrian lighting, and other elements. So the same, the same questions follow. Uh, after reviewing those park and open space recommendations, uh, we'd like your feedback. And if you can consider the following questions, what of those recommendations should we prioritize? How do you see these recommendations being implemented? Are we moving in the right direction uh, for the overall master plan when it comes to parks and open space? Uh, and are there any gaps in the recommendations we presented today? Uh, Michael, you asked, what is the benefit of a classification of parks? Uh, so within an official plan, there is um, the requirement for parks to be a certain size or, or be located in a certain area. By having a formal park classification system of the parks in Carleton Place, it just allows the town to have a better sense of what services they're providing. Um, and it also helps to determine what parks are being provided and what service level standard those parks should be held to. So for example, if it's a, just throwing ideas out here, if it's a regional park and you know the official plan says that this, a certain amenity should be provided in a regional park, um, then 
the town can ensure that either that amenity is provided or that park is not actually a regional park and its service level um, should be classified as something different. I don't know if Joanne or Isabel, you wanted to add to that comment there. Okay. <laughs> Um, there's also a question, are there any recommendations around public washrooms in parks, or will that be addressed in another section? Um, so it's not addressed in this section. I believe it's addressed in the indoor facilities section, but it may not be highlighted in this presentation. Isabel, could you just give me a thumbs up if that's your understanding as well? I do not believe this is covered uh, in any of the slides. Uh, we do have uh, some other recommendation talking about washrooms, um, but it's more where this is possible. It's not always possible if we don't have the services um, to have the washrooms. Uh, if we don't have the power or the water and the sewage, um, that may not be possible. So it will be, it should be a case by case um, depending on uh, requirements, the site location, but also it's a little bit uh, associated to the park classification. So we could end the park classification if we say that all regional parks should have washrooms. Um, that's also helpful to understand what needs to be put in a park. Yeah, thanks for clarifying that. So while we don't have you know, a recommendation of X amount of public washrooms should be provided by formalizing the parks classification section, sorry, system, um, as well as developing park standards. The town will be able to know what parks do need a washroom based on what facilities and amenities are available and what the service level or uh, um, popularity of a certain park is. Are there any other questions uh, about parks and open spaces? Um, either put them in the chat or please feel free to raise your hand. I see another one uh, from Dana. What is our current service oh. level uh, per thousand people? And uh, I believe if I remember the correct number, we are at the 3.4 actors per thousand. And we would like that to remain at, at least similar to what we have right now. Thanks, Isabel. Yeah, I missed that one. And we have another one from Michael. Has an inventory been completed of which types of amenities current, uh, Carlton Place currently has? Um, and uh, this actually was provided with our presentation uh, for the, with the public meeting number one in June. Mm -hmm. And it's that, uh, I guess, amenity assessment that then determined what Carlton Place was in need of. Uh, and on the following slides and on the recommendations, when they're finalized and posted in, in February, you'll see that there are actually numbers put to certain amenity types. Um, if it's determined that Carlton Place needs more or needs to maintain the current number that they have. Um, but that is coming in the following slides. Um, is there going to be an ongoing maintenance plan for outdoor amenities? Um, there's several outdoor basketball courts and tennis courts that are in, that are in need of repair. Um, so this is coming in the following slides um, related to outdoor uh, parks and amenity spaces. And it is um, if a recommendation is made to have a certain amount of amenities, then there's also a maintenance plan recommend recommended, excuse me, as part of that um, recommendation to make sure it's maintained properly or um, upkept to a certain standard that Carlton Place deserves. Um, what is the approach to accessible washrooms? Um, so this will be covered in the indoor um, facilities as well as 
the um, parks classification system and the park standards that we spoke about. Um, but if you are referring to indoor facilities, we will get to those on, on following slides. Uh, there's also a comment about the north side of town lacking good parks and what is the plan to resolve this. Um, we will get to uh, outdoor park uh, amenity recommendations on the following slides. Um, but overall, the recommendation is to maintain uh, existing northern um, park facilities and then focus on increasing geographical access for southern um, or yeah, southern Carlton Place. Maybe if I can just come back to the comment on the accessible washrooms, um, just to talk about accessibility. Accessibility I, is not really a focus on any of the recommendation on the screen, but um, it's a big uh, uh, recommendation as well. Uh, it, it was hard to uh, pick and choose all the recommendation we uh, present, but accessibility is one of the really important uh, recommendation for parks, but also for indoor facilities and, and for recreation in general uh, as part of the master plan. Thank you, Isabel. Let's see if anyone has any last minute comments they want to make about this slide before we move forward. Okay, seeing none, we will move on to the next set of recommendations, which is for trails and pathways. Um, so as Isabel also iterated, this is just a high level, um, you know, choice of six recommendations that we wanted to present today. Um, but if you don't see anything, please ask the question and we can either jot it down that we missed it or we can reassure you that it is included and we just couldn't present on it tonight and you will see it in the recommendations list posted in February. Um, so in summary, um, the six recommendations presented today uh, include that the town should cons consider, excuse me, implementing a formal trails and pathways classification system that includes smaller unofficial trails and paths. The town should consider implementing more signage, including speed limits on shared trails and pathways to promote pedestrian safety. The town should ensure that new and existing trails are accessible for people of all ages and abilities, including those using strollers and those with mobility restrictions. Maps of the town trail system, signage, and wayfinding should be provided at several locations along the OBRT and all trail heads or starting points of a trail. The town should consult and coordinate with developers during review for plans of subdivision and other new developments to provide opportunities to develop new trails. And finally, the trails in Sonnenberg Wood should be physically identified and mapped. So again, we'll go to a checkpoint, um, consider the following questions, which recommendations should be prioritized? How do you see these recommendations being implemented? Are we moving in the right direction? And do you see any gaps? Uh, so we have a question about how will speed limits be enforced? And I can touch on this first and then Isabel, you can jump in or uh, Joanne can, um, but I think it's more so to have people um, understand that there is a, it is a shared trail. It's not for everyone to be speeding by. Um, it wouldn't necessarily be enforced, but it would be a kind reminder um, that it is a shared trail and to use their speed with caution. Well, I have nothing to add. I think you covered it well. Okay. Um, there's another question from Sherry. So if new trails will be added and existing trails are more well known, will there be more lighting on trails? Um, so this would fall under that pathways classification system that we recommend the town implement. 
um, then they'll be able to determine what trails are um, used more frequently, um, will have more tra foot tra traffic or, or, or bicycle traffic or traffic in general, um, or if they cross a busy road, maybe it needs to have more lighting. And that's when the um, town will know what trails need to have lights and what trails are kind of more informal um, paths. Um, so thank you, Ray, for your question about um, improving accessibility, including on and off the trails. Um, and what about more rest spots? So that falls under the recommendation we have on the slide that talks about ensuring that new and existing trails are accessible. Um, and rest stops would be rest stops or benches or amenities along the trail. Uh, would be considered as part of that, as well as part of that classification system um, and determining what trails have the space and, and need the space to provide that, that uh, amenity. So are there any other trail or pathway related um, questions, comments that you have? Um, so there's a question about, is there a guideline for the distance between rest stops? Just thinking of the aging population. Um, that is something that, that would be determined as part of that pathways classification system and amenities. Um, there are a number of national and provincial policy documents that speak to aging in place um, and um, age-friendly recreation. And those documents would be looked to at that time when that classification system is developed. Shane, great question. How will actions be prioritized within the master plan? Um, so you will see, not on this slide, but when the recommendations do come out, um, we have a little indicator of how soon the recommendation should be um, prioritized. So there's short-term, mid-term, and long-term um, recommendation timing, um, which is like in the first one to two years following the adoption of the master plan, this should happen um, in three to four years. There's this timing of what it should happen and then five plus years. Um, come or take a couple of years, like I could be off there, but that's how the um, actions are and recommendations are being prioritized. And that being said, that's where we're looking to the public. So if we think, um, you know, based on what we've already heard that this is a priority, but that priority has since changed, um, we would like you to let us know of what you think is most important and what we should make a priority because then we can label it as such and ensure or and recommend that the town um, look to implementing that recommendation in a shorter time frame than recommending it midterm or long term. And Ray, I see here that there's also a number of um, European standards and ISO standards that would be very useful when determining, um, I'm assuming rest stops. So we will definitely, and accessibility, that'll be looked to when, when that classification system is developed. Thank you. Okay, just checking if there are any hands up and I see none. Uh, so we will go to the next set of recommendations, uh, which is indoor facilities and services. Um, so the first recommendation we're presenting today is that the town should promote a climate conscious approach when developing new indoor recreation facilities. The town should invest in a new indoor recreation facility south of Highway 7, and this new facility should include meeting rooms and a gymnasium at minimum. The town should meet and maintain the average service levels uh, defined for each existing indoor facility when comparing Carleton Place with other similar sized Ontario municipalities. 
the town should consider providing programs and spaces for teenagers by collaborating with the youth center. During phase one consultation, it appeared that the youth center was not well known in the community. When developing new indoor recreational facilities, consider creating a modern multi-use center where residents can access a variety of recreation and cultural options and programming. And finally, invest in a new smaller, sorry, a new small indoor recreation facility in Roy Brown Park and provide additional meeting rooms and space for programming there. Um, so just like the last couple of slides, we'd like you to provide your feedback on these recommendations that we presented. Um, there was a question about how we prioritize it. If you think that any of those should be a higher priority than the other ones, please let us know, um, as well as just generally if there's any gaps you see or if we're moving in the right direction overall. Uh, so seeing just some questions come in in the chat. Um, so the first one we have, is there a pool included in the new rec center? Our current pool doesn't allow for hosting meets. Large invitational swim meets generate huge income for a town like ours. Um, so I don't believe there's a recommendation for an additional pool um, in the South uh, Recreation Center um, because the existing one meets the facility, meets the community's needs. Um, but that's something we can we can take back and and look into. Um, just for Ray's Ray's comment, just about accessibility for older persons is a, is an issue in indoor facilities. Uh, new wheelchairs are very uh, complex and large, um, so all the new facilities that would be developed would be uh, accessible and meet accessibility standards. There's also recommendations, um, and Isabel, you can back me up here, but uh, that existing um, facilities be upgraded to be accessible. So that recommendation is not presented on this slide, but as a general theme throughout all of the um, strategic directions that it should be prioritized that these facilities are made accessible. That's correct. Uh, so Sherry, to your question, just which is a lot of our facilities are not well used or have a lot of wasted space. How will we justify new facilities when the ones we do have aren't being used well? Um, so that that follows another recommendation of further programming of these spaces, which we will get to uh, in the following slides. Uh, but the recommendation of a new facility in uh, south of Highway 7 is specifically for a geographical uh, purpose. There's currently a need from a geographical basis um, that the southern area of Carlton Place does not have equal access to these facilities that uh, northern Carlton Place does, and that's where that recommendation comes from. Uh, so it, Suzanne, just a comment from you, uh, which is something we'll definitely note and, and um ensure as part of it's just that recommendation five is close to the hearts of the arts carlton place um if the multi-use areas are big enough as there's not enough detail here um so these these recommendations were also summarized and kind of cut down so we can ensure that they are they fit on a screen and were legible um but there are specific details of, of sizing and the actual recommendations and we will just be sure and kind of look to those recommendations and ensure that uh, they are big enough for arts purposes because we know we did hear uh, feedback about that in phase one.
uh, just a comment to agree with improving current facilities to meet current needs. Um, that is something that is recommend is recommended. Again, um, it has to do with a geographical basis and it'll be further assessment on the town to determine where the ideal spot for the uh, needed amenities is. Um, Debbie, for your question about will the rental of these facilities be reasonably priced for recreational programming, um, that will come in the following slides um, as part of the service delivery portion, uh, as well as programming portion of this presentation. So Sherry, to your point about uh, everyone getting excited and not realizing we have numerous facilities already, um, we will ensure that as part of this master plan, we're recommending the existing facilities be utilized and programmed so that they aren't um, underutilized. But at a certain point, there is a space um, and, and lot size issue, as well as a geographic issue um, with access. And that is where this new indoor facility um, comes into play. I'm getting to everyone's comments. I'm just a bit behind here. Um, Ray, just checking in with users on accessibility. It is something that would would um, occur at a later date when, sorry, if and when uh, a new facility is developed. Um, but at this point, if you have any specific accessibility needs, please um, forward them our way and we'll be sure to look into those specifically. Um, so David, just regarding your pool comment uh, that there are only four lanes for racing events. Um, so it does just come down to population projection and the cost of a new indoor pool. Um, and just based on the population that Carlton Place is expected to achieve in the next 20 years, um, it is not warranted for a secondary pool to be developed. Um, but we can take your comments if, if edits need to be made or amendments need to be made to the existing pool and how that uh, can be achieved. Um, yeah, affordability of programs will come in following slides. Um, upgrading the canoe club. Um, Isabel, remind me, but I believe there is something there that talks about further use of the canoe club for activities. We have no details specific to the canoe club, but that was uh, looked at and but we can add uh, more details in the uh, recommendation. Okay, we will look into that. Um, just a comment that the Hackberry men would be happy to view any spare unused town facilities that they could move their workshop uh, into. So about the canoe club, uh, you can actually play table tennis there. We're allowed to do that. That's Ted Radmar. I just uh, I'm using my uh, Zoom for uh, Claudia. I looked at the canoe club. It seems quite great. We we play uh, we could play table tennis 365 days a year, even in rain. So. 
Perfect. So I think um, there are some indoor recommendations about multi-use facilities, but we will look to adding um, or take that back and see if additional verbiage, I guess, is, is warranted for the recommendations we have about multi-use facilities. Uh, okay, David, thank you for your clarification. Just the notion that um, squaring the corners of the pool would would create six racing lanes. So um, thank you for that that input. We'll take that back. Um, just regarding the curling club, um, it's noted, but there's also a meeting room, kitchen, and licensed bar at the curling club, and if this has been recorded, and it's also used for indoor shuffleboard in the summer. Um, so I believe the, the meeting rooms that you mentioned, as well as the kitchen, um, has been noted in our needs assessment that was part of phase one. Um, licensed bar, Isabel, was that directly tracked, or is that something we included with the kitchen? I think it was included with the kitchen. I'm actually looking at our uh, public meeting presentation, and I would like to uh, indicate that it's still available on the um, town's website for anyone who was uh, looking for more information about the existing uh, facilities and amenities that we uh, we have in current in place. Thanks, Isabel. So if there hasn't been something mentioned, and um, we don't go into too much detail during this presentation about kind of how we got to this place, um, the, the assessment we've done, the feedback we've heard, but that is provided in the um, open house number one presentation that Isabel notes, and it is available still on the town's website in case anyone wants to take a look at that. Um, just one note about the Station Senior Center is underutilized, uh, yet it's difficult to get feedback on how we could utilize the facility in the evenings or at times when Care Bridge does not have a duty person. Um, so if this is specific to private uh, facilities, so we do have feedback that we received from seniors as part of this process. We had a senior specific survey um, so we could definitely share that with you. However, we do have recommendations that are ensuring that um, both seniors and youth specific activities are invested in as part of this master plan. Uh, will there be specific outdoor facilities for pickleball fields? Um, so we will see that in the, uh, oh, sorry, we did already go through outdoor. Um, but we do make a recommendation of that. Um, the addition of more tennis courts and the addition of more tennis courts that are aligned with pickleball um, so that it can be played um, outdoor for that purposes. Sorry, Isabel, did you want to touch base on that more? No, that's perfect. Okay. Um, usually we combine the two, the tennis and the pickleball ball, uh, courts on the same courts. Uh, the lines for the two games are uh, on the pavement. Mm -hmm. And that kind of follows the trend that we're seeing in, in most recreation is to ensure that recreational spaces are multi-use so that they don't go underutilized if a certain amenity or sport um, is not using that space. So that's just the reason we went with that method. Uh, David, to answer your question of what would you consider climate conscious, um, I'll actually pull up the Oh, if I can, maybe not. It's not very happy with me right now. My computer, I have too many tabs open. Um, so climate conscious I can, from- I can jump in. I have the oh, recommendation. Excellent. Yeah, we have Thank it defined. Um, so a climate conscious approach uh, specifically towards indoor recreation facilities that would include um, reduction of energy costs, carbon emissions, and environmental footprints. Um, that would also include reviewing day-to-day -day operations and the maintenance of indoor recreation facilities and also utilizing locally sourced and sustainable building materials. So those are just some of the things that we would kind of encompass in that, the definition of climate conscience. Yeah. Perfect. 
Perfect. Thank you. I'm glad you had those up because now I'll know who to go to uh, when yes. we ask questions. Okay, thanks. Perfect. Um, so does anyone else have any last minute questions before we jump into the next section? This just being for indoor facilities and services. Just going to scroll here. So I'm not seeing any hands up, so I will just move on. Um, so our next recommendations surround culture. Um, so the, of the six we've chosen today, these are just the high level um, overview of them. And the first one is to utilize outdoor public spaces and venues to host cultural events, such as various fairs and markets, art exhibits, performances, and festivals. The town should consider developing a large indoor auditorium and, the and or theater space uh, that can accommodate large events and shows. The town should look to provide free or low cost cultural programming at town facilities, such as the Karambek Community Center. The town should consider hosting regular cultural events or programming such as painting nights, art shows, dancing events, or theater, camp, and classes. We should ensure that cultural facilities, programming, and events are available year-round through working with local organizations. And finally, the town should consider installing public art in parks, open space, and other gathering spaces that provide opportunities for social and cultural interaction for people of all ages. So now we're at the checkpoint. And I think by now we kind of understand the following questions that we should be considering. Um, but just to reiterate, which recommendations should we prioritize? Which, uh, or how do you see these recommendations being implemented? Um, are we moving in the right direction? And do you see any gaps in these cultural recommendations? Shane, I see that you love all these recommendations, so that's great to hear. Um, I'll definitely pass it on to the rest of our team members who aren't here today, um, but thank you for that, that positive feedback. Uh, so are you including Beckwith and Mississippi Mills for this master plan? They are substantial users of Carlton Place Parks and Rec facilities and parks. Uh, so at this time, we only focused on Carlton Place's population. However, we did do a review of uh, usage. Um, so whether that be provided by service and community members who have community groups or, or sports groups, um, if they have members who are not Carlton Place residents and what percentage of those people are also using um, Carlton Place's facilities. That being said, it does get um, a little tricky to determine. So the main focus was the overall population of Carlton Place. Um, but if that ever changes, um, there are recommendations in the master plan to allow the town to kind of change what type of um, service level they're providing. So oh, with the service level for Miss City Mills, they aren't paying any taxes at all. Starting, uh, this is for 2022. Maybe they'll do that in 2023, we don't know. Just hope, just have to hope. Uh, Mississippi Mills is not paying property taxes for their own facilities. Is that what your comment is surrounding? They aren't paying any any taxes to uh, Carlton Place, Mississippi uh, Mills. Mills correct. Yeah. Correct. So this is where um, in the service delivery section of this presentation, we speak to the cost of programming um, because because there are others who utilize these spaces. Um, there's a recommendation for other types of fees to be assessed. So whether that be specific user fees or rental fees, um, that is recommended, recommended, excuse me, in, in following slides. 
And um, there's a comment here about just the population of adjacent um, towns and, and uh, municipalities. And there is the option and um, you have seen it elsewhere for um, partnerships to take place to ensure facility needs are met or amenity needs are met. Um, and this is just something that we are still looking into um, and needing to formalize recommendations on. Um, Shane, just echoing what you're saying, um, the need for missing links in connecting with residents so that everyone is aware of information before events happen, just because of the rapid population growth. Um, this is something that we are recommending take place. Um, so there's already CP Scoop and the town already um, posts to their social media um, and updates the town website. Um, but there, if there's any other channels that you're aware of um, that should be updated, um, please do let us know. There are limitations in what social media channels the town can post to just from a social media perspective. Um, but again, if there's anything that I didn't list off there that you think should be utilized, please, please do let us know. Um, just there's just some comments agreeing about um, other community access and communication being essential. So those are things we will be looking into in following slides. Uh, there's just one comment that um, for a theater, uh, for the recommended theater that we are recommending as part of this master plan to consider um, Karambek. Uh, a safe as a safer venue than the town hall, and it's much easier to get into. Um, so we'll definitely take that feedback back. Um, so that's all the comments I have in the chat. I will just ask one last time if anyone has any more feedback on these cultural recommendations we're sharing with you. not seeing any, uh, we will move on to the following slide, which is programs and service delivery recommendations. Um, again, these are just six recommendations summarized, um, but please provide feedback on them or any other program or service delivery themed comment or question that you have. We're open to all of them. Um, so the first one we have is hosting appreciation and socialization events for volunteers uh, should be made a priority to help with encouraging more residents to volunteer while also fostering a great sense of community pride. The town should consider publishing parks, recreation and cultural programming and events information on a monthly basis in the CP scoop. Um, and this is in addition to the postings that they already do. Uh, the town should consider creating a volunteering committee made up of interested residents that can be involved in various town events and programming. Um, there, a better promotion of programs occurring at the Active Living Center um, is required. So the town can also consider working with the youth center to promote their programs, which are targeted towards youth and teens. Uh, the town should consider fostering new partnerships with private entities to provide indoor programming that's not available but requested by the community. And finally, transition to an online booking, payment, and registry system that allows the public to see available rental facilities and programming that is open for sign up. Uh, so this is the summary of the programs and service delivery. So have we hit the mark? Is there anything we're missing? Um, do you see any issues with implementation or any format of implementation you'd like to see? Um, or just any general comments or questions you have about program and service delivery in the town? 
Um, so Ray, for the need to improve forms used on the town site to apply and request, um, that would be part of transitioning to an online booking payment and registry system. Whatever that system is, um, it would be AODA compatible. Um, so I'm assuming that's that's where your concern lies, and I hope that that uh, sufficiently answers your question. So what does o A O D A stand for? That's a good question. It stands <laughs> for um, Accessibility Ontario okay. Disabilities Act. Okay, that's that's good. We like that. Is that correct? That's, yeah. Okay. Accessibility yep. for Ontarians with the Disabilities Act. Okay. Okay. Oh. Sorry, I lost my spot in the chat. Um, an online booking system is what we need for sure. Thank you, Debbie. That's a uh, good feedback to get. We'll be in, we'll ensure that that is a, a higher priority if uh, that's something that more of the members of the public and yourself deem as a, as a high priority. Um, a printed recreation and cultural directly would be a great asset for 2023 as they have done in the past. Um, Shane, to clarify, is that um, in addition to an online directory or instead of an online directory? In addition, um, okay, that's definitely something we can look into. Um, the printing of that is is a very small detail um, and doesn't quite fit into a master plan. But now that we have that information, it's definitely something we can look to adding to a recommendation or make the city. Uh, well, Joanne is now aware of it, but um, make the city aware of. Um, so there's a question here, and Joanne, maybe you can um, help provide clarity, but uh, it's from Doug, just saying you mentioned earlier that the, act, the Senior Active Living Center is a private facility, um, but whenever they have questions, they are told to talk to Joanne. Um, so who is it that details the use of that center uh, and when? Right now we're offering programs uh, through CareBridge Services. So we're running the Active Living Center um, Tuesday and Thursday afternoons, Wednesday mornings, and the Civitan is running programs for seniors on, on Fridays from 10 till three. Okay, thank you. We're having some great comments about loving the idea of a volunteer, a volunteer community, excuse me, and a great idea to do an online booking system. Um, so thank you for that. We'll definitely use that feedback in determining what priorities need to be set. Um, just a simple comment for advertising events is using the electronic billboard um, to promote events as well as the CO scoop. Um, <laughs> the current policy for what's allowed and what isn't uh, seems unclear. Not quite sure what that end part um, is regarding. So maybe Suzanne, if you could provide clarity, we can definitely look to incorporating the electronic billboard to promote events. Um, so just a comment of posting the, sorry, publishing and posting um, about what's ongoing in the town at places like church suppers uh, and et cetera, 
sorry, et cetera, um, because they don't find newspapers particularly useful. Um, so this is something we can look to. It could be something that the volunteer committee does uh, would be to push out, um, you know, activities and postings um, to private entities within the town. Uh, sorry, Joanne, just a follow-up question to your comment um, about the senior center. Uh, who is the contact for that when they need to get access at other times? Currently, we are not uh, renting the facility out to the public. We're just offering our seniors programs. Um, if Doug would like to contact me tomorrow by email, we can set up a time to discuss um, any programs he might be interested in offering. Okay, thank you. Uh, there's a comment on any future consideration to be a dementia friendly community. Um, I don't think this is something that was considered as part of this master plan. Um, Isabel, correct me if I'm wrong, if that came up at all. Um, Not specifically, but that could in a certain way be uh, included as inclusivity, creating inclusive spaces. Uh, so, yeah, so could I think be. there's that general recommendation that um, all existing and future space be considered inclusive and accessible. Um, so could fall under that, but happy to take a look at that further and see if specifics are needed to be put into those recommendations to meet that dementia-friendly community recommendation. Uh, just more of a comment that we'll make sure we note down. So for the online booking, just need to ensure that those who can't access online have equal opportunity um, and speed and access of booking spaces and programming. Uh, and finally, how can an organization use the electronic billboard? Who is the contact? Joanne, can I pass that question off to you? I may have opened a can of worms, but. <laughs> uh, currently the electronic uh, billboard at the Market Square is used to promote community events. Um, it's not used to um, promote um, other events other than town events at this point. Thank you. So seeing no more comments in the chat, just checking if there's any raised hands. I'm seeing none. Um, so we will move on to the final. Um, set of recommendations. And it is for the management of projects, staff, uh, and financing recommendations. Um, so again, these are just a selection of six, the ones that we thought we wanted to present were most important to present today. Um, but if you have any general comments regarding management or uh, project staff and financing, please let us know. Um, but in summary, uh, the first recommendations we're sharing with you today is to build staff leadership capacity by attracting and maintaining qualified team members who are passionate about what they do and are committed to building a strong and healthy community. The town should create a capital contribution policy and standardize agreement for the acceptance of capital contribution towards a park facility or component thereof for internal use. The town should continue to provide the full list uh, or inventory of the programs and services being delivered in Carlton Place, including the service providers delivering these services. Uh, complete feasibility studies and conceptual planning for major capital projects for parks and facilities well in advance to be ready to take advantage of funding and partnership opportunities as they arise. 
work with a park design consultant to provide an overall plan for meeting industry standards for the development of parks and open space. And as the town grows, formalize the titles of the team leads for each main parks and recreation division as managers to report under the director of parks, recreation and culture. So again, this is uh, project staffing and financing recommendations. Um, which of these recommendations do you think we should prioritize? Is there anything that we're missing uh, or are there any gaps that we need to fill? Um, or do you see um, a certain way that you would like to see these recommendations being implemented? So I think just one that we are already received comments on um, just about, oh, excuse me, the paper version and digital printed version of the Parks and Recreation Directory. So we're just ensuring that it's a full list of what the town provides, uh, as well as what other services uh, are provided by private uh, members within the town. Uh, just co some comments that the list should be a priority uh, and, and Sherry's agreeing with that. Um, so we'll make sure to assess the um, priorities that we assign to that and we'll make sure that it aligns with what you're thinking that it should be a high priority on the list. Uh, Jackie's just also saying that as a new resident, they find it hard to find out what's going on here, what's being offered. So that um, tool will definitely be useful to kind of everyone, both both uh, existing residents and new residents to find out what's ongoing. Uh, there's a lot of comments that these are uh, some pr pretty heavy hitting ones, um, but the list would potentially be an easy, quick win. Uh, so that should be a high priority or first priority out of these recommendations. And Shane echoes that just quick wins that need limited capital should be prioritized and then make a list of big, bigger projects to look for funding opportunities uh, in the future. So I think generally that is how we have um, prioritized certain recommendations within the master plan. It's either based off of quick wins or ones that don't require as much um, staff time or funding, um, or they're based off of what is uh, immediate need. And then anything else has been prioritized uh, as potentially a mid or a long-term priority for the town to look into so that they have time to determine funding opportunities. And Debbie is saying just the formalization of titles for team leads for communication would be helpful. Uh, and we agree and heard that as part of the phase one um, open houses and in feedback. So that is that is where that recommendation stemmed from. I'll just see if anyone else has their hand up. And I say that because I only have such a small screen, I have to scroll over. So thanks for being patient with me, but I'm seeing none and none in the chat. Um, so I think we can move forward. Oh, there's a final one. Apologies, I, I jumped ahead. Um, but this one is monitoring recommendations. This one actually is our, our final uh, set of recommendations that we'll be sharing with you today. Um, and this just follows um, ensuring that members of the public are, are happy and um, the recommendations through this master plan or, or um, 
implemented through this master plan are monitored and ensured that it's uh, meeting the needs of the community. So a regular survey of residents should be undertaken every three years to understand community needs satisfaction uh, with currently provided services and to identify any gaps in services. Tools and metrics should be established uh, and administered at or near the time of service delivery to understand user, user satisfaction with the service provided. Regular monitoring of the service level targets every three years is recommended to assess if the town is in surplus or in deficit of specific amenities. Timelines and recommendations from the town's asset management plan should be taken into consideration when upgrading aging facilities. The town's parks and facilities should be regularly assessed to identify any deficiencies and opportunities for upgrades. And finally, the town should identify existing and future policies and master plans where parks, recreation, and culture recommendations should be incorporated into. So I'll ask the final question again. Of, do you have any recommendations? Is there anything you want to see? Are there any gaps we have? Um, I'll let you ask anything related to monitoring now. So Debbie, you're saying that regular surveys are important to keep the needs of the community in the forefront. Um, do you think three years is sufficient? Do you want them sooner? Or do you think that they should be um, at a longer time frame? Excuse me, I have something in my throat. Um, but I think that's kind of where we're looking at to ensure that the timing we provided for those satisfaction surveys meets the needs of, of you, the community. Three years is a good time frame, so we will look to that. Um, Ray, I, I see you saying you're assuming this will follow continuous improvement practices, um, as in the feedback received as part of these satisfactions will then guide what is improved upon in the following years, um, and how will a member of the public give feedback at any time? This will be determined uh, through the previous slides where we talked about um, what staff members are in charge of what and titles being um, made accurate so that people know who to contact about what issues they're having. Uh, so Jackie, your comment about monitoring deficiencies and opportunities to upgrade should be a priority. Uh, so we didn't go into those details tonight, but in the recommendations list, there are a number of upgrades um, being recommended, being recommended, excuse me, as part of this plan. Um, so that falls under not so much as monitoring now, but what we've already noticed. But if there is um, some type of deficiency that's not addressed in the list of recommendations that does come out, um, please be sure to make us know so that we can ensure that that's added in. So any last comments about monitoring? I'm not seeing any. And just a follow up from Jackie's comment, um, is the 
deficiency in, in pool space just because the pool is rounded and not squared and takes away from um, the six lane usability of the pool. So that's something we can go back and look into as a team, ensure it's uh, addressed as needed in the master plan. Um, so that kind of concludes the formal portion of our presentation. Um, so if you don't have any more comments, you um, can provide them, you know, you can take your night back and provide them elseways, but we do have a general discussion coming up if you do have any questions, um, but just some other ways to get involved. Um, the CP Scoop still does publish information on this project and we will continue to do so um, until the master plan is brought to council. Uh, you can also follow along on Carlton Place's social media. Um, or send us a email uh, or give us a call or check out the town website for more information on this master plan. Uh, the town will be receiving public comments um, on what you've seen tonight up until December 15th. Um, so please use any of the methods um, shown on screen uh, to provide us with feedback. The feedback we received during this meeting is being recorded as we said, and will be posted online so that people can view it uh, and come back to it as needed, but also um, writing notes. So anything you've said tonight, we have tracked it. It's just if anything else you think of um, in the following weeks, please provide it uh, up until December 15th and we can track and consider your comments. Uh, so this does conclude, formally conclude, uh, the presentation portion. So I do just want to open the floor up to anyone who has any general comments or questions about the process or how we got here or any of the recommendations we went through tonight. Um, please put it in the chat or raise your hand, uh, either using the raise hand function or you can actually just put your hand up in the screen and I'll call on you. Um, or if you don't feel comfortable putting your comment in the chat or speaking aloud, you can submit your questions uh, or comments to either Joanne or Isabel, and their emails are located on the screen. So I'm not seeing any raised hands. I'm going just through here quickly. And I'm not seeing anything in the chat. Um, so I would just want to thank everyone for taking the time to attend tonight. Um, it's really helpful to the team, both at Stantec and at Carlton Place, to determine uh, what kind of recommendations we are pursuing, how they should be prioritized, and if we're on the right track. Um, so again, this presentation will be posted online uh, tomorrow, as well as a guided video so that you can take a look again uh, at these recommendations and provide more feedback. And the final recommendations will be posted in February so that you can take a look at the full list of them and give us feedback um, on those as well. So we look forward to receiving your feedback. Thank you.